the shipbuilding industry stands out from the other industries in the aspect that it is not based on unit production. So what does that mean? Let us explain. For example, in the automobile industry, cars of a particular model or design are produced on an assembly line since every product of a certain design is similar to the other. But ships are not constructed this way. Every ship is based on the owner's requirement. Hence, even if the basic hull design may be the same, the dimensions, capacity and systems used in one ship may be very different from another. The shipbuilding process is generally divided into a sequence which we will see in this video. But before that, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. For just $67, you can make as many videos as you want and you never need to pick up a camera or use any fancy editing software. With Doodle Procurement of material After the contract has been signed between the client and the shipyard and the detailed design has been carried out, the materials specified by the design is procured by the tendering department of the shipyard. The detailed design already specifies the type of materials required for each part of the hull, the thicknesses and the grade of steel. Stowage of plates Once the steel plates are procured by the shipyard, they are stored in the stockyard. Plates of different thicknesses and grades are available in standard dimensions. There are usually two positions of stowing plates, vertical stowage and horizontal stowage. Many modern shipyards carrying out Multiple projects also practice methods of plate stowage scheduling at the same time. In this method, each plate is marked with the project it has been designated to and they are stored in an order that is synchronous with the working schedule or the master plan of the shipyard. Plate Preparation or Surface Preparation When a plate is brought to the shipyard from a steel plant, it is not ready to be used for construction. Hence, it needs to be prepared for the same. This includes two major processes, straightening and removal of residual stress. The plate obtained by rolling in the steel plant is not completely straight, though it may visually appear to be so. Plates may also be mangled during transit from plant to shipyard. Hence, the straightening is carried out once the plate reaches the shipyard. Priming and Drying The plate is passed into a chamber in which a primer is sprayed on complete surface. Priming protects the steel from corrosion. The primer applied is usually a zinc rich coating and it should be chosen such that it does not interfere with the welding and bending of plates. Plate Cutting The surface treated plates are to be cut into desired shapes and size in order to be developed to the required three dimensional shape or used as straight plates for other structural components. Plate Bending A ship's hull usually has multiple curvatures unless only straight plates are used in the design. It might seem quite easily achievable on a 3D modeling software package, but production of the same is a complex process. If you have a Netflix ka monthly subscription plan, hai, let's assume it's 499. Okay. Special methods are used by the shipyard to bend and develop steel plates and stiffeners to require 3D curvatures in order to make them fit the shape of the hull. 
assembly once the plates and frames are prepared and given the required shape they are welded according to the structural drawings prepared by the design department of the shipyard the hull is divided longitudinally into blocks and each block is again divided into assemblies and sub assemblies during the ship building process each ship block is brought to the building dock where they are erected with cranes as per the welding sequence after each erection welding is carried out on block joints improvement in alignment are made by use of proper jigs for curved shell panels by using laser alignment tools and by use of proper welding techniques that have lower heat input most of the machinery especially those which are bigger in size are fitted during this process the ship is ready from the outside and is then painted using anti fouling paints to reduce hull corrosion and resistance launching many big shipyards now construct ships on building docks which are then flooded and the ship is towed out to the outfit basin by using tugs but most shipyards still follow the traditional process of launching a ship today launching methods have become safer and more proactive in approach as computer programs helps the engineers to estimate the load on the ship during launch outfitting after launching the ship is berthed in a fitting out basin for completion the main machinery together with auxiliaries piping systems deck gear live boats accommodation equipment plumbing systems and rigging are installed on board along with whatever insulation and deck coverings are necessary sea trials once all the construction and outfitting work is completed the sea trials are carried out by the shipyard authority in the presence of designated representative of the ship's owner and ship surveyor some tests include ship trials turning circle test crash stop test zigzag or camp overshoot maneuver spiral maneuver engine trials and astern test ship building is a complicated process which involves several departments working together to build a vessel which is not just seaworthy but is also equally efficient in terms of both operations and economics hey 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 do you run a business well here's the thing only On the night of January 1, 2019, the large container ship MSC Zoe sails on the southerly route along the Dutch Wadden Islands during a northwesterly storm. The storm causes the ship to lose 342 containers, leading to large-scale pollution of the sea and Wadden Islands. 
The Dutch Safety Board asked the Deltaris Research Institute and the Maritime Research Institute Netherlands, Marin, to assist in an investigation. The aim? To answer two central questions. What could have caused the loss of containers above the Wadden Islands? And how can we prevent this in the future? With detailed calculations, Deltaris was able to determine the wind, current, water depth and wave conditions at the time of the accident. The water depth on the route that night was between 21 and 26 meters. There was a northwesterly storm with winds up to Beaufort 8, almost perpendicular to the route. Large beam waves with a significant height of 6.5 meters were coming toward the ship, resulting in extreme wave heights of up to 11 meters. These conditions occur once or twice every year in this area. As a result of the shallow water above the Wadden Islands, the waves are steep with high crests. Regular breaking occurs, resulting in wave crests falling forward at high velocity. These dangerous shallow water waves are well known to crews sailing regularly in the area. The environmental conditions determined by Deltaris were modeled accurately at a scale of 1 to 63 by Marin at its unique model testing facilities. We prepared a test model of an ultra-large container ship like the MSC Zoe at this scale. Marin also did extensive calculations and simulations and talked to nautical specialists who have sailed container ships in this area. Based on these investigations, we came to the conclusion that the following four phenomena together could have led to the loss of the containers above the Wadden Islands. 1. 60-meter-wide container ships like the MSC Zoe are very stable. When a force is applied to them, they want to return to their upright equilibrium position quickly. This results in a short natural period at which the ship starts to roll as it is brought into motion by an external force. For the present generation of ultra-large container ships, this natural period can be between 15 and 20 seconds, close to the wave periods that occur above the Wadden Islands during northwesterly storms. As a result, roll resonance can occur, causing healing angles of up to 16 degrees. So although they are stable, these large container ships can roll strongly. This causes large accelerations and forces being applied to the containers that can exceed safe design values. 2. In these beam waves, the ship does not only roll from side to side, but also heaves up and down many vertical meters. With a large draft of around 12 meters and a water depth of only 21 meters, there is very limited under keel clearance between the ship and the seabed, less than 10 meters. As a result of the combined rolling and heaving, a wide ship with a large draft can touch the seabed. When this happens, shocks and vibrations can occur in the ship, containers, and lashings. The lashings can fail as a result. These visualizations show the magnified vibrations of the wooden test model when it hits the basin floor. How this works for a steel ship that touches the sandy seabed needs further research. 3. In the very shallow water above the Wadden Islands, breaking waves can hit the side of the ship, resulting in a large upward jet of water reaching the containers which are 20 to 40 meters above the surface of the sea. We call this green water, as it is massive seawater and not just white foam in the wind. This massive green water hits the bottom and the sides of the containers. These can become damaged as a result, but complete stacks of containers can also be pushed over like dominoes. If we compare the locations on the ship where green water impacts are observed with the damaged rows of containers on the ship, we see a clear correlation. It is therefore probable that green water impacts played a role in the loss of the containers. 4. Finally, the hull of the ship was also hit by breaking waves. This can result in vibrations throughout the ship, damaging containers and lashings. To prevent this type of disaster from occurring in the future, it is important to look further than the specific conditions of January 2019 and the effects on ultra-large container ships. We also have to look at other ship types and sizes that sail this busy area. The same four phenomena will occur for smaller ships, but their sensitivity will be different, as will be the limiting weather conditions for safe operations. Based on the annual traffic above the Wadden Islands, Marin has advised the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management to conduct further investigations of three ship types. Ultra-large container ships with lengths of up to 400 meters, like the MSC Zoe, a shorter and narrower Panamax, nearly 300 meters long, and a smaller container feeder with a length of 160 meters. The importance of testing smaller ships was underscored when the feeder Rama lost seven containers on February 11, 2020. 
In addition to the prevention of container loss, the goal of the present Marin investigation is that these ships and their crews and cargoes may also sail safely in this particularly sensitive sea area. We're doing this for the shallow southerly route directly above the Wadden Islands, as well as the deeper, more northerly route. Based on these results, the government can determine what policy is required, advice to ships from the Coast Guard, or closing an entire route under certain conditions. We will share these results as soon as we complete our extensive investigations, because at Marin, we want to contribute to cleaner and safer oceans.
Do you know what a lion's plan is? Have you seen a lion's plan on your vessel? Uh, if not, then this video is going to be very useful for you. Uh, because if you have a lion's plan on your vessel, you should study it for the information it represents. And you should know about, about what information you can derive from a lion's plan. Uh, this video today will discuss all of it. So I'll show you examples of the lion's plan for different kind of vessels. And you can get an idea of uh, what it's all about and what it represents. Because uh, when the principal dimensions such as displacement and the block coefficient or the midship coefficient are known, uh, you may have an impressive amount of design information, but you still don't have a clear image of the exact geometrical shape of the ship. Now that shape is given by the lines plan. Now in my previous video, I talked about uh, the form coefficients such as the water plane coefficient, the midship section coefficient, the block coefficient and the prismatic coefficient. And in today's video, I'll talk about the lines plan because uh, the shape of a ship can vary in height, length and breadth. Now, in order to represent this complex shape on paper, the transverse sections of the ship's hull are combined with two longitudinal set of parallel lines, each one perpendicular to the other. And this is what I'll take you through and I'll talk about what each of these lines represent, how they are depicted on the lines plan and why you should be knowing about it. So I'll start with the ordinates. The ordinates are actually the evenly spaced vertical cross sections in the transverse directions. Usually the ship is divided into an average about 20 ordinates and it starts from the center of the rudder stock and uh, starting from the rudder stock, it's called the zero ordinate and it goes up to the intersection of the water line and the molded side of the stem, which is the last ordinate. Normally it's the ordinate number 20. Now the, bond, the boundaries of these distances are numbered zero to 20 and they are called the ordinate numbers. Now a projection of all ordinates into one view is called a frame plan and this is what you see on your screens right now you can see all the ordinates are shown to you and is projected onto one uh, one single frame and this is called a frames plan now the other thing that uh, is given in the lines plan is the water lines now what are water lines and now horizontal sections of the hull are actually called water lines here i have shown you uh, two depictions of it now one of these is the design water line now, this is the water line of the ship at the level of the immersion uh, in full cargo of the vessel. So when the vessel is loaded with full cargo, uh, this is the water line of the ship at the level of the immersion. Uh, between the baseline and the design water line, there are usually about three to four other water lines drawn and they are counted from the baseline, which is called number zero. The construction water line or the scantling water line can be higher. When the water lines are projected and drawn into one view from above, the result is called a water line model. And this is on the left side of your screen. So on the left side of your screen, you can see all the water lines have been projected into one single frame. Uh, that is not the case with the picture on your right side. The picture on your right side depicts the water lines from the forward part of the vessel. You can see the bulbous bow and the shear and the frame of the vessel. But on the left side, you can see all the water lines are depicted in one single frame. And that is why it's called the uh, water line model. Uh, then I move on to verticals and buttocks. And again, um, this is in one single frame that I'm showing you. And in the subsequent slides, you will uh, see them, how they are also displayed if you view it from the forward part of the vessel. Now, verticals uh, or the buttocks, uh, uh, vertical sections in longitudinal direction they are called verticals or they are also called buttock lines. Now, these longitudinal sections are parallel to the plane of the symmetry of the vessel. When the buttocks are projected and drawn into one particular view, the result is called a shear plan. Now, apart from the rectangular sections, sometimes planes are used in longitudinal direction, but an angle with the midship plane. These are called the diagonals or the scent lines. Now, let me show you what diagonals look like. And this is what diagonals look like. Now, the diagonals are longitudinal sections that intersect with the hull surface at a certain angle. Now, on the longitudinal plan, these diagonals, they show up as curved lines. The curvature of the frames uh, or the ordinates and the water lines and the buttocks are compared to each other and modified until they are consistent and develop smoothly on in all directions. Now, when this procedure is executed, the results can be checked using the diagonals. The most common diagonal is called the bilge diagonal. Here in the last couple of slides, I'm trying to show you how the diagonals 
uh, are depicted, how the water lines, the ordinates, the verticals and the diagonals, they all come together. Now here you can see in the picture here, the water lines and the ordinates, the verticals and the diagonals, all they are represented in one single frame, but it is being viewed from the forward part of the vessel. Now, of course, uh, these days uh, the plans are made with the aid of computers and that have the capability to transform the shape of the vessel automatically when any kind of modifications in the ship's design require it. Now, when the lines plan is ready, the program is used to calculate, among the other things, the volume of the vessel, the displacement and the stability of the ship uh, set against the drafts. Now, here in this picture here, this is an example of a lines plan of a trawler vessel. Uh, with a length of uh, overall of about 120, 130 meters. All right, so as you can see in the lines plan here, both the verticals and the water lines are drawn in one half of the ship. Now in the body plan, the frames aft of the midship are drawn on the left side and the forward frames are drawn on the right side. Now the lines plan is a molded plan. That is, it is at the outside of the frames. Uh, thus inside of the shell plating. So this is what it is depicting outside of the frames and inside of the shell plating. But you can see how the line span of a trawler, uh, which is about 125 watt meters length looks like. And you can also see the associated information provided along with the line span, uh, which is the length between the perpendiculars, the length uh, overall, the molded breadth, the draft of the vessel. I I'll show more details in the next drawing. Because here, this is a lines plan of a tugboat. Now, the lines plan that you see here and the lines plan that I will show you next, which will be of a yacht, you can see that uh, the lines plan here are of the vessels that have underwater bodies that are quite, that differ actually quite drastically. Now, you can see from these plans that a ship will be finer with smaller coefficients, such as the block coefficient when the water lines, ordinates, and the buttocks are more widely spaced. Now, for instance, a rectangular forecastle has only one water line, one ordinate, and one buttock, and the coefficients come up to about one in number. Now, if you don't know what coefficients are and what is the importance of it, and, uh, then please watch my previous video. The link is in the description section below. Make sure you watch that video before you watch this video so you get better understanding. Now, I was talking about the other information, associated information that you can get from a line span that you can see here. Uh, for example, the length between perpendicular of the tugboat is about 35 meters. The molded breadth is 10 meters. The draft molded draft is about 4.5 meters. The underwater volume, the block coefficient, the midship coefficient, the prismatic coefficient is provided as well. Then we have the LCB, which is the longitudinal distance of the center of buoyancy of the vessel from the aft perpendicular, and also the KM of the vessel is provided. Uh, this is a, again a lines plan of a yacht and like I told you before in my previous slide that when you see the lines plan of a yacht or a tugboat you can see that uh, uh, these are that a ship with will be finer uh, with smaller coefficients and especially when the water lines ordinates and buttocks are more widely spaced so you can see again here a rectangular forecastle will have only one water line one ordinate and one buttock and the coefficients may total up to about one and again, you can get an idea of the length of the vessel. When I say smaller vessel, you can see the length of the vessel here. Length between perpendicular is only about 23 odd meters. The molded breadth is about six meters and the draft is four meters. So you can see these are smaller vessels and this, the line span of a smaller vessels, and as you will see, will differ quite drastically uh, from uh, vessels which are slightly longer in length, as I'll show you. So when I will start showing you the, uh, let me show you another, uh, another, line, another drawing of a line span of a yacht. So you can see here, uh, no, that is not a, this is not a yacht. So let me change it. This one is actually a Coast Guard ship. And again, this has a very uh, uh, different kind of an underwater shape. You will not see such shapes, underwater shapes on a commercial vessel. And that is why I've started with the line span of a, of a tug, a yacht and a Coast Guard vessel, because these are smaller vessels, as you can see by the length of the vessels. And they have a, a different kind of a very different kind of a underwater shape of the hull. Uh, and as I'll show you in my next drawing, I'll show you a heavy cargo ship, a multi-purpose ship. Uh, they will differ slightly. They will, you can see, you will see a difference between the lines plan here uh, as compared to the longer ships. So here you can see is the lines plan of a heavy cargo ship. Uh, you can also call it a multi-purpose vessel. And you can see these are much longer in length. These are about 135 odd meters. As you can see, the molded breadth is also much larger. This is about 28 meters, the draft 
molded draft is about seven meters. The underwater volume is huge. It's huge compared to what I showed you before. And you can see these are more the traditional kind of shapes of underwater bodies that maybe I don't know what kind of ships you guys are sailing on. But if you are sailing on commercial bigger vessels, then you can see that uh, the, the how the lines plan depict the underwater body of the ship differ quite uh, differ from the smaller vessels. So, of course, you can be sailing on the smaller vessels or you can be sailing on bigger or maybe on both. But why I try to show you both uh, both the pictures is because I want you guys to be able to understand the difference between how the lines plan is depicted in a smaller vessels or longer vessels. Uh, vessels with different kind of block coefficients. So remember, as you see every picture, every drawing, uh, please make sure that you also compare not only the length or the draft of the vessel or the depth, depth of the or the breadth of the vessel rather, but also look at the values of the block coefficients. All right, how closely they come up to uh, the number one, or whether they are larger than 0.7 or less than 0.7. Because if it's larger than seven, you know they are called finer form vessels. All this I discussed in my previous video that uh, a vessel with a no, I said the other thing sorry a vessel with a smaller block coefficient smaller than 0.7 they are referred to as finer vessels all right uh, so vessels with more than 0.7 of block coefficient they are more called they are called full form vessels they are not called finer vessels all right so look at the comparative values of the block coefficient the midship coefficient and the prismatic coefficient and you will see that value changing as well because if you go back and look at the value of the tugboat the block coefficient was lesser than 0.7. These are called fine form vessels, whereas the vessels with block coefficient more than 0.7, they are called full form vessels, as you will see in the next picture. So this is the last picture, of course, and this is of a frigate. Uh, you know what a frigate is? So if you don't know what frigate is, uh, frigates are actually, if I can remember, they are actually normally uh, Navy vessels who have been changed into multi-purpose vessels. So the background is that of Navy vessels. They have a Navy vessel background. And then those Navy vessels are used for different kind of purposes, depending on what they are used for. So again, you can see here they have uh, these vessels. Uh, again, this vessel here is a frigate vessel. You can see again the block coefficient value goes down. It is about only 0.45. So again, these are fine vessels. And you can see how the underwater vessel, the shape of the vessel is again a bit uh, different from what you are probably used to on bigger commercial vessels. Uh, and so compare the values and you will see how they depict and uh, make sure that uh, if you have a lines plan on the vessel, then go and look at the lines plan and see how it differs from the ones that I show you. And you can get a lot of information from the lines plan, especially about the underwater shape of the ship. A lines plan is very useful, especially if you're going for dry docks. Sometimes many dry docks, they ask for the lines plan of the vessel because sometimes they want, not sometimes, but they want to arrange the, the keel blocks that you have on the dry dock. Uh, they want to arrange it according to the underwater shape of the vessel's hull. So make sure that you know where your lines plan is located and you can access it. And if a copy is required, you should be able to send it. Uh, from an exam point of view, if you are asked about, an ex uh, about the lines plan, then you should be able to talk about it based on this video today. You may also be asked it about it in a different way because especially if you go for oral examination, the surveyor may ask you that how uh, the dry dock people, how do they decide on how to place the keel blocks? So you may talk about the dry dock plan. There's a separate dry dock plan, which also shows about the positioning of the dry dock blocks, but the lines plan also comes in very handy. So the dry dock people, they might actually ask for both the plans, but whether they ask or not, you should be knowing about the lines plan. You should be knowing about what information it represents, why is it useful, and uh, when it may be required to be accessed. All right, so I'll leave you guys uh, with this video today. It's uh, good enough, and I'll move on. I'll talk about the, uh, the vessel plans next. I'll talk about the different kind of plans and the drawings that is available. So here he's just given a basic, uh, I just wanted to see what the contents were there in the lines plan. He's just given a basic introduction of lines plan, not much detail. He's not given much details, just a basic uh, concept uh, and he's not explained how the lines plans are made. So now we'll be doing the details here. That video, I wanted to see what details it had. Because Kafi is a number of uh, 
व्यूज वेर मेनी सो आई वॉन्ट टू सी इसका भी कितना कंसेप्ट क्लियर है कि नहीं चलो इतना कंसेप्ट उसका क्लियर नहीं है तो अभी कम टू द लाइन्स प्लान हियर सो लाइन्स प्लान आर बेसिकली सेट ऑफ प्रोजेक्शन हियर these projections these kind of projections so you are basically cutting your ship into so many parts maybe transversely maybe longitudinally or maybe horizontally from bottom to top onwards so these are known as orthogonal shapes because you are cutting it at perpendicular to your hull so here you are cutting transversely perpendicular to the hull so what shape you are getting with that uh this section so do you have got orthogonal sections which are cutting your hull perpendicularly so what will be the shape of hull so here the shape of hull in the starboard side is this here the shape of hull in the starboard side is this at this section it is here like this at this section this is here so now suppose this is the midship section this is the aft section from uh, aft perpendicular to midship it starts from 0 maybe you have 10 11 or maybe 21 uh sections here now how do you make the body plan here so this section is aft this section is forward now if you see the various shapes are coming ye shape ki baat kar rahe hain ye shape so ye shape kaise ban raha hai तो फॉर्थ सेक्शन में ये शेप आएगा इस तरफ आफ सेक्शन में ये शेप आएगा इस तरफ नो आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन दैट एंड देन वील कम टू द थ्योरी पार्ट तो यहां यू आर कटिंग इट लाइक खीरा काटते हैं ना खीरा काटते हैं ना गोल गोल खीरा कटता है अगर ट्रांसवर्सली काटें तो ट्रांसवर्सली यहां कटेंगे तो हल का शेप कैसे आएगा हाउ द हल शेप विल कम शो यू वन मोर डायग्राम यू कटिंग लाइक दिस अब इसको काटने पे तो हल का शेप कैसे आ रहा है यहाँ ऐसे आ रहा है तो फॉरवर्ड सेक्शन का शेप ऐसे आ रहा है दिस सेक्शन शेप इज कमिंग लाइक दिस दिस सेक्शन शेप इज लाइक दिस मिडशिप का सबसे बड़ा एरिया है आप सेक्शन विल बी स्मॉल हियर आप पोपेंडिकुलर फॉरवर्ड पोपेंडिकुलर हियर एक्चुअल ड्रॉइंग नाउ इज दिस तो जीरो इज आर्ट पोपेंडिकुलर टेन इज द फॉरवर्ड पोपेंडिकुलर हियर यू हैव टेन स्टेशन so zero you have the shape of the hull coming like this one the shape is coming like this two it's coming like this three is coming like this four is coming like this and five which is the midship is coming like this similarly six is midship is coming like this forward we are going forward is section 7 8 9 and 10 now there are when you have a very finer sections you can take half points there so you have sections here because your turning is faster here So nine and a half, zero and a half, or uh, and then one and a half, two and a half, but you will not take three and a half and all because here it's not that fine near the midships. Any reason you know why this uh, foxhole, uh, this area is more up as compared to aft? Can you tell me the reason? ये वाला तो आपका forward section है, midship का ये aft section है. ये क्यों उठा हुआ है? Why this is raised? Anybody has got an answer on that? So flare to raise yet? No flare, Nick. Wrong. Not flare. Flare नहीं है. Answer कुछ और है. Decide करो. S से होता है. Forward shear. S. Forward shear. Shear. Correct. Correct. ये आपने second minute पढ़ाया था. Shear. Shear is the forward and forward to aft uh, curvature. आपने पहले ही बताया था पिछले क्लासों में. बेटा आपको कितनी बार बताया बा. ये इसलिए बार बार कहता हूँ क्योंकि देखो अगर ओरल में आपको ये दिखा दिया और बोला जाए ये क्यों उठा हुआ है भाई ये तो कोई आपको वीडियो बताएगा नहीं देखो मैं बता रहा हूँ वीडियोस में कुछ मिलेगा नहीं आई वांटेड टू फाइंड फॉरवर्ड में जो ये ऊपर जा रहा है सर इस पर दिख रहा है की क्यों हल्को हल्के शेप को रिप्रेजेंट कर रहा है ना सर कोई फॉरवर्ड उठा हुआ है ये तो कर रहा है लेकिन ये क्यों उठा क्यों है वो तो ठीक है लेकिन फ्लेयर नहीं है अच्छा मैं आपको जरा ये क्लियर कर देता हूँ फ्लेयर और शेयर में फर्क क्या है ठीक है अभी शेयर और फ्लेयर में आपका डिस्टेंस बता आप हाथी को आगे से देखते हो ना यू सी ये एलिफेंट फ्रॉम फॉरवर्ड कैसे लगता है एलिफेंट फ्रॉम फॉरवर्ड कैसे लगता है बहुत बड़ा लगता है ना 
आती है कान बड़े होंगे अगर वो अफ्रीकन एलिफेंट है तो और बड़ा लगेगा इंडियन एलिफेंट के कान बिचारे के छोटे होते हैं तो इतना बड़ा नहीं लगता तो हाथी जब दूसरे को डराना है वो अपने कान फैला लेता है ताकि बहुत बड़ा लगे इवन अगर आप शेर के सामने झुक जाओ तो वो आपको अटैक करेगा अगर आपके पास कुछ भी स्ट्रक्चर है छाता है कुछ भी आप अपने को ऊंचा दिखाओगे तो डर के भाग जाएगा इसका मतलब अपना फ्लेयर बड़ा करो तो दूसरा जानवर डर जाएगा लेकिन शिप तो कोई फ्लेयर डराने के लिए नहीं करता ना तो फ्लेयर ऐसे होता है हार्ट का शेप समझ लो बेसिक सेकंड मिनट में पढ़ाया था ये फ्लेयर आगे का पोर्शन बड़ा होता है पीछे का लाइक हाथी का आफ्ट होता है तो वैसे हमारा भी पूप होता है छोटा अब पूप उसका नाम क्यों है पता है वाई इट इज नोन एज पूप डेक क्या रीजन पता है जस्ट फॉर योर जिज्ञासा पूप क्यों होता है पूप करने जाते हुए हाँ अब सही बोला वहां पहले मेक शिफ्ट पूप होते थे टॉयलेट करने के लिए आई रिमेम्बर जब हम लोग रोजी एंकरेज गए थे दैट वाज लॉन्ग बैक कालीदास में भी क्या बल्गर वीट एंड ऑल तो कई लोग राजेंद्रा में भी था क्या नहीं नहीं है तुम्हारा पूप डे क्या राजेंद्रा मिलेगा क्या बात कर राजेंद्रा में सारे फर्स्ट क्लास बाथरूम थे फर्स्ट क्लास था या उसमें इंजन नहीं था बाकी तो सब सही था डेक वेर ऑल वुडन मास्ट हमारा सबसे ऊंचा था टी एस राजेंद्रा की फोटो चाहिए तो हमारे फेसबुक में है मेरे फेसबुक पेज में भी है राजेंद्रा की फोटो और इसमें दीवार में भी है सर दिखता है पीछे हाँ दीवार में शूटिंग में है यार पीछे में था और एक भटकी है अरे नहीं शाहरुख खान की भी शूटिंग है यार वो दिव्या दिव्या जो थी ना मर गई थी दिव्या क्या नाम था उसका बड़ी बडिंग भारती उसको भारती दिव्या भारती हाँ उसकी शूटिंग हुई थी हमारे जूनियर्स बता रहे थे तब उन्होंने क्या किया उसको छेड़छाड़ कर लिया था दिव्या के साथ तो शाहरुख खान आ गया था उनको डपटने के लिए तब वो सारे किरण ने घेर लिया उसको वो डर गया शाहरुख खान आई थिंक दैट वॉज एटी फोर एटी फाइव वो बैच वाले मुझे बता रहे थे उसको घेर लिया बेटा बोलता है तू बीच में आए तो तू पिट जाएगा देख ले तो शाहरुख खान पीछे हो गया अरे वो हमारे बैच में तो बड़े शैतान थे यार वो तो जॉगिंग के टाइम भी भाउचा तक का हम जॉगिंग करते थे वहीं वो शुरू कर देते थे हम लोग पूरी टीम जॉग कर रहे हैं डेढ़ सौ लोग सडनली फॉरनर दिखी बीच में आते थे और एक बंदा सदार बीच में निकला और फिर वापस ज्वाइन करके भाग लिया समझ लो आगे नहीं बताऊंगा ऐसे लोग करते थे है ना समझ गए तुम समझ गए ना हॉन दबाया और निकल गया अच्छा आगे तो ये फ्लेयर है तो फ्लेयर में ये आपका फ्लेयर क्यों होता है फर्स्ट रीजन है कि आपका रिजर्व बॉइंसी बढ़ जाता है फ्लेयर है ना रिजर्व बॉइंसी बढ़ जाएगा आपका बॉब लेटिंग को आउटवर्ड करवे चले देते हैं सेकेंड थिंग आपका फॉक्सिल एरिया बढ़ जाता है तो आपके स्टेशन बढ़िया हो जाते हैं सो वेन यू डाइव इन टू दी यू कम बैक फास्ट एंड आपके एंकर क्लियर के रहेंगे क्योंकि अब फ्लेयर नहीं होगा लाइक बार्ज बार्ज में आपका फ्लेयर नहीं होता ना बार्ज ये बना हुआ है तो बोल ये बार्ज है तो आपका कोई फ्लेयर इसमें तो ना तो ब्लॉक शेप है ब्लॉक ब्लॉक को विशन वन इसमें कोई फ्लेयर नहीं इसमें एंकर लगेगा और ये गिरेगा साइड में तो ये फ्लेयर है तो इसमें सेंटर में होता है आगे की तरफ हाँ इधर होता है ना इसका एंकर इधर रहता है तो यहाँ गिरेगा और इसका स्क्रैच भी हो जाए कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता बट जहाज पे स्क्रैच हो जाए बहुत बड़ा है अब शेयर क्या है वो समझा दो वॉट इज शेयर क्योंकि वो आपको समझना है शेयर क्या है इसको साफ करें। सो सपोज दिस इज द शेप सो यू गेट अ शेयर लाइक दिस अब शेयर हम पढ़ाएंगे आपको आपके लोड लाइन में भी शेयर पढ़ाएंगे तो शेयर इज लाइक दिस सो बिकॉज योर आफ फॉरवर्ड करवेचर इज मोर एज कम्पेयर टू आफ करवेचर सो दिस इज अपवर्ड करवेचर ऑफ डेक सो दैट योर ग्रीन सीज Your green seas are the not the spray, but the sea which is coming here is doesn't come so fast because this is twice of half shear. So forward shear is twice of half shear. Why? Why? What reason is why forward shear is half of uh, more than twice of half half shear? Why? Reason, you know? 
फॉरवर्ड शेयर ये फॉरवर्ड शेयर इज ऑलमोस्ट ट्वाइस ऑफ आफ शेयर क्या रीजन रीजन इसमें है कि फॉरवर्ड में पानी जल्दी आता है और आफ्ट में पानी बहुत कम आता है लेकिन अगर आफ से पानी आए वेव का उसको क्या कहते हैं वॉट इज द टर्मिनोलॉजी वेन वॉटर कम्स फ्रॉम आफ्ट ऑन डेक नॉट द स्प्रे बट द वॉटर उसको क्या कहते हैं पूपिंग वेरी गुड पूपिंग क्योंकि पूप पे आता है पूप डेक तो इसको पूपिंग कहते हैं दैट इज वेन यूर वेव इज फॉलोइंग यू द वेव इज फॉलोइंग यू एंड योर स्पीड इज लेस एंड द वेव कैन डू द पूपिंग अगर बहुत बड़ा वेव है 11 मीटर 10 मीटर का है पीछे से आ रहा है विच इज रेयर दैट इज अ रेयर फिनोम आगे से तो हमेशा ही आता है अब क्लियर हो गया फंडे सब क्लियर है शिप कंस्ट्रक्शन में फंडे क्लियर होने चाहिए नहीं तो फिर रट्टा ही मारना पड़ेगा इसलिए मैं वापस रिवाइज कर देता हूँ क्योंकि अगर मैंने सिर्फ रट्टा मार के करा दिया तो उसके तो पढ़ाई नहीं कहते ना फिर तो आपका वो हो गया अभी टाइम पास हो गया और काम नहीं हुआ कुछ तो बॉडी प्लान बेसिकली कर्व्स को जो भी प्रोजेक्शन है उसको हम एक प्लेन पे ला रहे हैं so you are getting the projections of those orthographic uh, orthogonal planes cutting your hull kya shape bana rahe so ye 10 9 8 7 6 so ye 6 and 5 jo hai midship wala hai baki sa ye forward ka hai chhota aur ye aft ka ya ye sorry ye ye aft ka hai aur ye forward ka forward section aapka starboard side port side aapka aft section Now, these lines are your water lines. ये जो आपकी लाइन दिख रही है दीज आर योर वाटर लाइन तो ये बेसिकली जो प्रोजेक्शन है आप फॉरवर्ड से कैसे शेप देखोगे हल का उससे पता लगे फॉरवर्ड से आप अगर शिप, शिप को देखोगे तो ये हल प्रोजेक्शन कैसे लगेंगे दिस शेप विल शो लेकिन हम साइड से देखते हैं नंबरिंग कैसे है फिर से मैं डायग्राम दिखाता हूं ये हो गया सपोज जीरो वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन यहां बना हुआ और दो ले लो टेन हो जाएगा ये वाला सो जीरो ये हुआ टेन ही हुआ और ये बाकी तो हाफ इस तरफ हुआ ये पोर्ट साइड है हाफ इस तरफ वालो ये जो शेप्स आ रही हैं वो स्टाबर्ड साइड है ये लेकिन करवेचर ऐसा लेकिन हम बना रहे हैं ऐसे रहे हैं तो यहाँ का करवेचर तो ऐसा तो ऐसे ही बना रहे हैं बट यहाँ का जो करवेचर हम उल्टा करके ऐसे बना रहे ये करवेचर ऐसा है लेकिन हम स्टाबर्ड साइड में इस तरफ बना रहे हैं फिर बताता हूँ ये करवेचर ऐसा ही है तो हम ऐसे बना रहे हैं पोर्ट साइड वाला आफ्ट का लेकिन जब हम फॉरवर्ड को देख रहे हैं ये सेक्शन को अगर हमने घुमा दिया उल्टा डायरेक्शन में किया तो फिर ऐसे बनाया इस सेक्शन को घुमा के फिर ऐसे बनाया यू अंडरस्टूड कैसे बनाया गया क्योंकि जब तक ये कंसेप्ट क्लियर नहीं होगा मुश्किल होगी क्योंकि बॉडी प्लान अगर समझ आ जाएगा बाकी प्लान समझ आ जाएगा डायग्राम देन वी गो टू दियोरी या दोबारा समझाओ ठीक है समझिए आप समझ गए एक बार और समझा देता हूँ चलो चलो तो ये जो है आफ का सेक्शन है आफ का सेक्शन जो है उसको हमने ऐसे बनाया ये आफ सेक्शन है दिस बेड लाइक दिस नेक्स्ट सेक्शन को हमने ऐसे बनाया मिडशिप को इधर बनाया और फॉरवर्ड सेक्शन का ये जो हल के साथ बनाया उसको हमने ऐसे घुमा के बनाया इट इज नॉट द सेम सेक्शन वी जस्ट टर्न इट अराउंड एंड देन मेड इट सिमिलरली उसको हमने घुमा के बनाया so we are placing that everything in the same plane isko main dobara bataunga agli class mein again i'll show talk about it theek hai taki aapke dimag mein aaye kyunki ye agar clear nahi hoga you can't write theory mein bata dunga ye samajh nahi aaya to you can't write theek hai so we'll take a break next class i will explain again because this is one which you have to understand baki to you can understand very well ये थोड़े प्लान में थोड़ी सी गड़बड़ हो जाती है क्योंकि विजुलाइजेशन का चक्कर है ठीक है ओके देन आई एक्सप्लेन इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास सेम थिंग वी लव ब्रेक थिंग